Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I've got to service the car. I've got the van and I've also got my car which I use for daily commuting. Um, the mileage racks up pretty quick on this car. I've got a 70 mile a day journey to and from work so you can imagine the mileage adds up pretty quickly and you need to service your car. Well, it's recommended you service your car every 10,000 miles which is what I try and stick to. So it's due a service. I've got all the filters. I'm gonna take you through step by step how I'm gonna service my car. I've got a Mark 7 Golf, uh, the match edition. So if you've got a similar car, um, it will give you a good idea of how to service it yourself. Save yourself a bit of money. Um, I've serviced this car since I've had it, so I've never taken it to a garage to service it. Um, that way you save yourself a lot of money and you know that it's done properly. So first things first, I'm just going to take the car, give it a good warm up. I don't want the oil to be boiling hot, but I just want it to be, you know, lukewarm so it drains out nicely. This is a good opportunity to go and get McDonald's breakfast if you haven't had breakfast. I think I'm going to back it in. Okay, we're underneath the car now. In order to get access to the oil sump, you've got to remove this under tray, and uh, that is just with a T25 Torx bit, and it's got lots of screws holding it on. So bear with me while I try and get this tray off. No, oh, and it's got some bigger ones here as well. Um, I think that's probably T40. Yeah, that'll do. So this is a sump plug on the bottom of the sump, so it's a 19mm socket, you should probably wear gloves for this, but um, just got this container here, you can use a washing up bowl or something like that, as long as it fits under here you'll be fine. So I'm just going to drop the plug out and get the oil draining. You see it's draining nicely because it's warm. Apologies for the funny camera angles, it's quite difficult to record underneath cars and things. So um, we're down to a few drips now, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the plug back in and then we're gonna tackle the oil filter and then we can drain off whatever's remaining after we've done the oil filter. Just while we do the oil filter. Okay, now we need to tackle the oil filter. So that lives up here. So underneath here, you can see this black casing that contains the oil filter. Yeah, it's quite a big socket you can get on it, it's 32 mil. And then that can just loosen it off. It's only plastic so you've got to be a bit careful with it. Here it comes. Sorry the lighting's terrible, it's hard to get it at a good angle. So there's our oil filter. Simply pop the old one out. So, it was a man filter, the last one I used, and this time I've gone for a Bosch one. It was just a little bit cheaper, that's all. I'm going to give this 
a little bit of a clean out before I put the new filter in. So you want to change these rubber o-rings. You just need to get something to hook the old one out. Um, and then your new one can go in its place. It also comes with a drain plug on the um, filter housing. I don't tend to use this anyway because I just take the whole thing off in one. It just gets a little bit more messy. I mean, you've only got to drain that much more oil from it, so you might as well just drop the whole thing off, but it comes with another little O-ring, so you might as well replace this as well. Now you want to get the new filter, and it's got these clips on it, and they just slot inside here like so. With the oil seals, the o-rings, you want to just get a little bit of um, your old engine oil and just put a little smear around the uh, new o-rings. That just lubes them up so they don't bite up when you do them up. Okay, once you've got it to this stage, you can go ahead and put it back in. There we go. So that should be nipped up nicely and just the small oil drain plug needs to be torqued up to, um, I can't remember what it says, 5.2 newton meters and that's a quarter inch socket. So uh, I'll be back. Now this step can often be rushed, um, draining the oil out because it does take quite a while for it to completely drain out. But if you want to do something properly, you might as well Take your time about it and uh, save yourself problems in the long run so i've left that for about 15 minutes and it's stopped dripping now so i know that the oil tank is completely empty so i'm go ahead and clean the sump plug up and put that back in now i'm going to take this cover off and go give it a clean So I believe it takes about four litres and these um, bottles are four litres so it should be about one of these. Um, I'm going to put three quarters in and then check the dipstick. Actually I need to wipe the dipstick. So with one four litre drum it brings it up to about there. Once you start the engine it will drop down a little bit. So I'm going to start the engine now, let it circulate and then we'll see where we're at. As you can see, after letting the oil circulate, it's dropped right back down, so we're going to have to top it back up. We won't get a true reading until the under tray is back on and it's on the ground level, so we get a rough amount in there and then you can fine tune it when it's on the ground. See, that's still only a quarter of the way up the stick, so it takes more than four litres, maybe. I don't know, five. It's creeping up. I'll leave it there for now until it's flat on the ground and then we can check it. Just need to go underneath, make sure there's no oil leaks and then we can put the under tray back on because we're finished under there. The next thing to change is the air filter and before I take the cover off I'm just going to blow away any dust that's around it because you don't want that to get into the filter housing because then it will get sucked into the engine when it starts. So 
So there we go, I've given it a good clean out inside here. And now we can compare the filters. So this is 10,000 miles worth. And you can see the colour difference there. So we can go ahead and put that new filter in. Just like so. And it's got to sit nicely in the groove around the edge. So it seals up lovely. So the next thing to do is the fuel filter. And that lives in here. So, and carefully remove the cover. Got to savour all that diesel. go ahead and put the bolts back in. So these should be torqued up to 5 newton meters. I don't have a torque wrench that does that so I've just literally nipped them up very gently, evenly, so it shouldn't leak. So once you've changed the fuel filter you're going to want to come inside, turn the ignition on and just let the, the system prime itself. So finally, you're going to want to change the cabin filter, and that's inside the glove compartment. There's a couple of clips up here that you need to pop, and one up here. You have to press quite hard. Ow! <laughs> Mind my language. And then that drops down to reveal up here a little compartment where the cabin filter goes with lots of levering and pulling it eventually does come out um, to reveal the cabin filter quite filthy I'd say and let's see what the new one looks like oh well it's beautiful isn't it look at the difference these were both the same color at one point Slide in nicely like that, and then we can put the cover back on. This um, here has got a slot in there, and there we go. Push this and then turn the ignition on. Reset or change service. Yes, service reset. Cool. Turn the ignition on. Car uh, setup. Service. There we go. Oil change in 9,400 miles. So it will give me the heads up when the service is due. Proof of service number six, and I'll just put the receipts in here for all the parts which I've changed. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, please check out some of my other content. I've got lots of videos on here now, so yeah, check it out and uh, see you next time.